Hey guys, here's how I finished up my MG Jester. Nice and simple, my vision this time is for a scale appropriate yet slightly exaggerated finish. Imagine it's made by some dude who loves military sci-fi finishes, who just watched the anime and was inspired because that's exactly what happened. I'm also keen to do further experiments with acrylic paint rendering and effects and this is a perfect victim. Uh, yeah, I mean a wonderful canvas to try them out on. We don't need to use custom paints at all, but it sure feels cool to do so, plus it's secretly easy. In all seriousness, I am just mixing new colors into previous colors and hey presto, custom mix. Here are the colors I want to use overall, and it also helps to make mixes of them so that they work together better. Once they are intermixed, there will be more harmony between the colors. For the primary color, I started with the main color I used on this MAK Griffin Folkek kit from Hasegawa Models, and there is a tiny amount remaining. Rather than start from a clean bottle, I will reuse this one and add our dominant color navy. I used the Tamiya tape as a guide marker for eyeballing my paint and thinner levels. Yes, I have friends that count their drops or measure their paints on tiny scales, but the day I saw my teacher, Koyo Kurama Sensei, Eyeballing it changed my life forever, and after practicing it for over a decade now, I love this approach and I can't go back. I'll add the secondary color in this manner too, first by spinning it up and mixing it thoroughly, and then boom! That just happens to be exactly the right amount to mix in. Yep, whatever was on the mixer, and it's such a wonderfully liberating way to think about paint mixing. Plus, let me be upfront about this, with experience it does become easier. Same again with white. I'd like to tune and brighten my mix up a little more, and we'll add this beautiful gloss white paint. Yep, exactly the amount on my mixer. Then eyeball the paint and see if it makes you happy. Yes, you can do it as many times as you like to. Your eyes will tell you when you are right, or simply fine tune it again later. This is your process, your vision. You are always right. Now for the secondary color on the jester, I have simply flipped the order. The main color in first, then the dark navy, and then a touch of white, then hey, perfect. For my ID bands, I'll use this orange yellow straight. And for the frame and some panels, straight shots of these colors too. There we have it, a custom yet pretty simple paint plan, and it should all work together nicely and hopefully look cool too. Good intentions of keeping it simple and just spraying nice, even flat coats instantly went off the rails as soon as I started slinging paint. Spraying the dark navy on black is pretty safe because you don't see a huge difference. Please let me share something here. With my previous finish on the Grimdark Mise, I knew exactly how I wanted it to look. I had a very sharp and clearly defined vision, and the steps just kind of laid themselves out. I just needed to keep up, and the result is most satisfying. For the Jester, however, this is quite a new look and finish, a new idea so my vision for it is not clearly defined. I have the start of an idea, and what I have heard Kawaguchi-san refer to as a blurry vision. This is really okay, and not uncommon for me too. Uh, sometimes I have a very sharp vision, a fixed idea, then other times just notions that I hope, you know, oop, that will reveal themselves to me once I am brave enough to start down the path. I've wondered if it was due to my familiarity with the genre perhaps, as I am still relatively new to Gumpler, but that can't be it because I already have a very clearly formed vision for my MG Barbatos project for example, but my MAK Lunar Diver Stingray, which is the second run at this kit, is still a little blurry. Interesting, right? As I learn more about how to express this concept, I will share it with you in a future video. Back to the Jester specifically, and here's what I've done with a mixed effort airbrush finish, using the primer colors to help impart color separation to various parts. Color separation is a term that Bandai taught us Gunpla builders, and yes of course, this also exists in scale modeling, where we call it paneling, or in extreme version with directional lighting effects, modulation. For a better understanding of this, I have a chapter in my sci-fi FAQ book that explains it well. For the Jester, what I wanted it to do was break up the Dark Navy and make it more visually interesting and also perhaps impart a scale up effect and help it look a little more like a very large machine rather than a small plastic toy. I was not expecting a great deal of difference and it's a low level of experiment and just something for fun, but I'll admit it's kind of a fail. It's just not noticeable enough. Oh well. 
Let's continue with the plan to do much more in the detailing steps that should produce a much better and more interesting result. Water slides. Okay, so more than calling it weathering, I'd like to call this detailing because that's what we were doing. We're adding more details to our finish. Yes, we can do this physically by altering the kit and doing scribes and so on, and we can do it with paint and weathering effects too. Our models, our choice. The first step for me was to add some custom water slides. They are from Delp B Decal and are quite nice. I like to use a sharp craft knife and cut the backing paper just big enough to carry the water slide over and place it carefully in a small shallow dish of tap water, face down. Yeah, it sounds cruel, doesn't it? But I put it face down so that I can see the backing paper wet out. And that way I know it's saturated and then I flip it back over. These water slides separated from the backing paper really quickly, say in like 20 seconds, so that's a heads up. I pull them out of the water with some tweezers and then place them face up on kitchen paper to absorb some of the water. I like to pre-place a little decal setting solution first, then with my tweezers again, hold the backing paper in place and gently slide the decal off with a clean, soft brush. And then argue and swear it into place for far, oh, no, I'm not supposed to admit that, am I? Kidding, I sometimes have trouble, but these tiny ones can be a pain. But with practice and by choosing a not too big brush, I can usually wrangle them into place pretty quickly. Thankfully, this second one went on fast. And there we go, tiny in scale points of detail and interest. Love me some decals. One more detailing step I want to add was some flashes of ID band colors. The dark scheme is of course attractive, but I love adding these and I thought you might like to see the reveal. You know what I mean, that moment after you mask off a section and with much suspense, you start to unwrap it and then fully expect to see a whole bunch of runs and drips uh, and all that under your tape. And you've only got one eye open because the horror. Oh wait. The glory, it's perfect. Ah, oh, that's the reveal. One of the most exciting, but also nerve wracking moments for me in modeling. How do you cope with the reveal? And does it freak you out too? Next, let's protect our water slides with a clear coat. My preferences for this are semi or full gloss. And yes, it does slightly alter our finish with full gloss tending to be slightly thicker and more durable and helping us to keep the finish tight. But heads up, Humidity and temperature extremes can mess with our clear coats. And yes, you guessed it, exactly when I wanted to do this, we were hit with a rainy spell. And the humidity was like billions and billions and bit, wait, uh, it was like 90 to 100% for a couple of weeks. Crazy. So I tested it out to see how much I could get it to fog up. Uh, so with manufacturing a fail, I was very successful. Then I wanted to test how to recover and share that with you. It was actually quite disappointing. These acrylic lacquers are so forgiving and resilient. So long as I kept it a wet coat, there was no fogging at all. Just a little around edges where there was a chance of mild overspray. So pro tip there for me was that if I need to do this again, I'll make sure to get the parts all back on the sticks and keep it really tight and wet. Oh wow, excellent bonus innuendo moment. To repair this, I just waited for the humidity to drop and airbrushed on wet coats of acrylic lacquer flat clear. And Instapro repaired. Perfect. APR, acrylic paint rendering. Or draw two ovals and then just draw an owl. Approximating my custom mix with some acrylic colors, dark sea blue, flat black, and flat white. And making some mixes of them on my fancy pants wet palette testing out the everlasting gobstopper paper this time. Uh, it has like membrane in the title, I think. Best product placement ever. <laughs> Eyeballing custom colors to make some sections look more beat up and interesting. The shield is a perfect victim here. Let's use a coarse makeup sponge to apply our darker shadow coat and then freak out at all the bubbles. Oh, I'm just kidding. This will happen with this kind of application. And actually, it improves our finish, believe it or not. Then mix in a slightly wetter mid-tone, and then finally, some highlight color, all wet on wet. No, I'm not going to say another innuendo joke there. Quickly switching over to a medium large soft brush, I've then applied straight water onto the surface to further blur, 
or in my mind, bokeh, the paint and smooth out the bubbles into a beautiful texture and finish. No, wow, this was both exciting and fun to do and the finish is exactly what I was after. I totally thought I was up for an epic fail here. This is somewhat between the box art and something master Yoshiki Takani-san might lay down on a canvas. After a couple more armor plates like this, using the same color mixes, I've gently dry brushed and accented the lighter pieces with the darker version of the paint mix and then reversed that by doing the same on the darker pieces with the lighter end of the base color mix. I hope that makes sense. In my mind, I'm confused and I just did it. This keeps the entire model and finish in harmony with it being painted completely with the same sea blue, black and white, just in different places and mixes. There's no black nor white, pure, on the model at all. So everything is in a tone of the base blue gray. Most satisfying. Some effects lend themselves best to oil paints, and although Bandai plastic is notoriously incompatible with mineral-based spirits, I've used some very carefully. Rule of thumb, keep such thinners out of the joints or places where it might pull. By using it on surfaces or places like this where it can dry very quickly, we establish a bit more of a margin of safety. We can also use a fast drying thinner, such as the naphtha-based Zippo lighter fluid. It also seems to have a lower surface tension, which is perfect for glazing, and it totally gives us more street cred in the Gumpla world. Hmm, <laughs> maybe not. For some space dust effects, I'm going with buff as a kind of close to neutral light color, and as I'll be glazing it with blue, it should help pull it back into the blue-gray overall tone of the model. With my little dish propped up on a wad of blue tack, I'm adding a little chunk of the oil paint with the carrier oil drained out of it. I like to work with an angled palette like this so that I have the pure paint at the top, the mix just off to the sides, and then the thinner reservoir underneath so that I can vary and customize my paint mix as we work. Let's carefully place this into appropriate details to help accentuate and bring them to life. This blue is beautiful when used as a shadow and will help bring the yellow details closer to the, the dark blue overall of the suit and help them to photograph better too. Some very light glazes of Starship Filth, an aptly named dark brown paint, along with a couple more glazes of the dark blue to help add a little variation and interest, whilst shifting some of the acrylic effects over a little more to blue. Most pleasing. And that's that, we're done. I do like how it looks and how it remained relatively fail free. Hey, heads up, if you are looking for a book on sci-fi modeling, my new sci-fi FAQ is out now. 428 pages of tips, product guides, techniques, plus so much inspo. Link in the description or just visit my website, paintonplastic.com for more information. Yes, it's awesome sauce. I'd like to thank my supporters on Patreon for paying me to film myself painting giant space ninja robots. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to bonus videos, then visit patreon.com slash paintonplastic.